Austin. Oh, it works now. All right. Fifty one. Yeah. That one. Redwood member. I think it says at the end, use the dressed dimensions. So that's these, the dressed dimensions, but it's called out as a 16 by 16 square. So all numbers that way, you know, you want a two by four, it's not two by four. You want a six by six, it's not six by six. The dressed dimensions are the reduced dimensions. So that's what we will use for the area of that. And then the L five by five by half, where do we get the area for that? Yeah, look that thing up. Don't calculate it. Look it up. All right, so what's it want to know? It wants to know the compute the total allowable axial compressive load that may be applied through a rigid top cap plate. And that's so the whole thing, right, compresses together. That brings into play our combined load equation, which is this thing right here p so right there is the end equation stress b n that's the modular ratio area of the a area of the b how do we know which one's a and which one's b the larger modulus of elasticity is a so the highest e is material a Steel is 30,000 KSI, wood is 1,300 KSI. Steel is definitely material A, and this is material B. Good. The equation clearly has material B in as the stress. The book didn't do so well because they put material A in as the stress. That's why the book's number is different than whatever you calculated. So you probably got it right. If you think you got it wrong by looking at the book, you probably got it right. Anyway, <laughs> so we need all these pieces, right? We need N, that's the modular ratio, A over B, as far as the modulus goes. We need the area A, we need the area B, and then we need the stress of the B material. Not 13, uh, 1050, okay? So let's get the pieces. What's N equal to its, since, you know, you could write it as 30 over 1.3 and just drop all the zeros, right? Uh, that works. What'd you get for N? 23.08. That's unitless, right? Because that's just a unit over a unit. Others get that, 23.08. Yeah, yeah, all right. Uh, area A, A material is the steel. Did anyone look that up? What's the area of one of these? How much? 4.8. What's for lunch? Coffee. Yum. Yum. Right. 
Well, it's time you got to bring enough for everybody. Just saying. It sure smells good. And we have how many of these? Four of those. Yeah. So area A is going to be four times that. How much? 19.2. Okay. And then what's area B? Yeah, that's just 15 and a half times 15 and a half. Say it again, Evan. Uh, 240.25. 240.25 inches squared. Yep. So we should be good to go to calculate P. Stress of B material, B materials of wood, that should be 1050. That's the where the book went wrong. It put in 20,000. Whoops. That's a bit of a mistake. Uh, and then we have 23.08 as our N value. Our area A, 19.2. And we're going to add to that area B, 240.25. That closes that bracket. And we get P. What'd you get? Seven one seven seven one seven four nine three four nine three pounds. And there's some decimals there. Yeah, much different than the book. The book was at five one nine or something. Five nine. Yeah, five nine one. Questions. A lot of parts and pieces, but it's, uh, it's not that difficult. You just have to keep your units straight for sure. Keep your units straight. Like, especially like doing the modular ratio, make sure you don't have KSI and PSI in there. Um, but yeah. You just had one? One homework problem? Yep. That's printing. I'm so excited. All right. There is uh, a section in here that we're going to skip right over. Well, we could do inclined planes, but I might come back for that. Because there's later in the term, inclined planes makes a little more sense. Why do it now is what I'm doing. Um, yeah. So we're going to leave chapter 11 behind. And we're going to do torsion. And we're not going to do a lot of torsion because it says, very mechanical engineering application. It doesn't really cross over to civil and other things. So we're going to try and stick to the very basics of strength of materials, but we'll cover torsion in the first form of the formula. So at least you understand how it works. And uh, we'll go from there. Well, let's turn them in. We got homeworks for them. Yes. There's a whole pile of like old ones here. Great new one. Great new unit. Seven. So you. And oh, the back. And you're going to get fired. I just got a foot. Uh huh. Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. Yep. Kevin. 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 Yep. Kevin. Yep. Oh, grab my papers. Oh, yeah. Sweet. Um, <laughs> what do you mean by format? The homework format, dude. Homework format. Problem statement. I need a problem statement. Uh, I need a pretty drawing, not. I'm looking at a few people. <laughs> Make it pretty. My problem statement. Make it pretty like you're going to turn it in for a resume or something. Your problem statements are what? The one word. They're lame. Yeah, fine. fine. <laughs> All right. Torsion. 
Jordan has a couple new concepts, so that's that's always fun. But we get to go back in time a little bit. No fence. That's a pulley. Okay. And that's a, a load coming off one side of the pulley and a load coming off the other side of the pulley. Right? Uh, but I put it at foot pounds. So that's essentially a. Here, I'll just leave this one off. It's a moment, right? Foot pounds. Remember those? So some kind of a shaft with pulleys and some kind of power takeoff. That's that drawing right there. We just talked about good drawings. So there's a really good. We do this a lot, right? We do it in automobiles where we have a shaft and we're gonna put a pulley on it, put a belt to it and then drive some kind of uh, application, an air conditioner or an alternator or whatever the heck we want to drive, right? So on the, we're using the right side, it's 82 and the left side 44. Yeah, so this is a moment, a rotational moment of 82, and this is a rotational moment of 44 foot-pounds. So these are moments, right? That's what we call them here. What are they called out in the real world? Torques, unless you're talking to engineers, then they'll call them moments, right? I just ordered brackets for posts. I have some big posts I'm going to put in the concrete. And the bottom bracket that holds the big post, those brackets are called moment brackets. That's cool. So I'm having trouble understanding what's going on. Is that like a, is that like a cam shaft or something? Or, oh. Okay. Well, yeah, it looks exactly the same. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. my God. It's so close to exactly the same. Yeah. Especially this one. This one's like, I almost caught it. Is that better? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So here you go. There's a rotation of 600 here, a rotation of 2400 here, going the opposite of each other. Same kind of thing. We're a rotation of 82 going one way. This rotation, I could maybe just take the arrows off. Because there are twisting effects, right? And then we got 44 going here. So torsion stress is that twisting effect, right? If the torsion stress gets too big, we get a torsion failure. Some kind of a drive shaft. I think it's an implement shaft off the back of a tractor. Right, so an implement goes on here, the motor's here, the motor's creating some kind of a rotational torque to the shaft, and the implement out here is like a big tiller or a big mower or whatever. The big tiller or the big mower hits a stump and stops. <laughs> the motor doesn't know that, it just keeps going and we get a torsion failure. It's a twisting failure. That's pretty good. Cool. So, uh, I think a student brought that in a long time ago. Um, where, if you look up, you won't find any unique stresses called torsional stress. So often we just use the yield. Clearly that has exceeded the yield, right? It is not just yielded, it's permanently deformed. All right. So when we calculate a torsional stress, we use a yield stress or some stress that's given to us. All right, it's that rotational stress. The equation for torsional stress, let's see what they use for, do they have a special symbol? I don't think they do. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, they do. They use this, they use shear. That's for shear. That is the same one for shear. And the equation is TC over J. It's a pretty simple equation, really.
What's interesting is they switch for torsion, they switch from moment to torque. Same thing, people. Torque is a moment, moment is a torque. But the T stands for torque. The C, anyone remember what C was in the bending stress equation? Have we done bending stress yet? Not yet. M, C over I. We're heading that way. Now the C, what was C? Anyone remember? Samuel will give you a hundred bucks if you remember. Whoa. You got a hundred bucks on you? No, sorry, he's not giving you no hundred bucks. Don't look it up, you can't look it up. Cause you're, you're losing all of the, the mental, the mental synapses that are firing right now, trying to find the C value, you're going to ruin them if you look it up. But if you find it in your brain cells, it'll stay. I don't got many of them. Oh, okay. I, you don't have to look it up. I'll help you with this. This is a round shaft, right? That's what we're going to say it is. Round. No, close though. So here's the cross section. Anyone remember what that's called? Centroid, true, but what's this axis called if I called it A, A, or X, X? Let's go X, X. Centroidal axis. Centroidal axis or neutral axis. I was going to say that before. Or neutral axis, yep. So remember, the C value is the largest value to the outermost fiber. For a round object, the C up and the C down is exactly the same, right? But for a unsymmetrical object, like maybe a channel, the C value is going to be much greater the one direction that would be the other. So C is from the neutral axis to the outermost fiber of the cross section. This is a round, we'll call it a, a 1.25 inch diameter. And we'll make it copper. So how big, what would C be? Yeah, half of the 1.25, so 0.75. T is the torque, and that depends on where we wanna do our torsional stress. We'll do it in here. This is where we wanna know our torsional stress. So that means we need to know the torque in the section that you're doing your analysis of. So if we have 44 going this way and 82 going that way, what's our torsion here? Yeah, it's gonna be the difference. It's gotta be. If they are both going in 44, there'd be no stress, right? If they're both going the same way 44, like that'd just be something spinning and, and not nothing resisting each other, right? Yeah. Sorry, this is a stupid question. No. C point seven five. Our diameter is C is oh. half of. Oh, that can not That's not half. Yeah. Who gave me that number? Me. Nick. Okay. okay. What number do you like? Uh isn't it like point six two five? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. That was that was Kevin correcting us there. Sorry, I didn't no, sorry, don't be sorry. It's good stuff, man. Appreciate that. That's why we don't do math in our head. That looked wrong. <laughs> I'm like, now that he said that, isn't that one and a half? Like yeah. point seven five. All right, good. So, what's our torque? What's J? We we'll get there. Let's get our torque first. Don't do it in your head. Be my recommendation. Okay. I get one point. I get one point three six, yeah. but I think I hit divide. You're right. Four minus. All right, torque is 38. What's our unit? 
foot pounds. Okay. Now, Kevin, ask the question. What is J? Thank you. J's super cool. J is the polar moment of inertia. Wow. Polar moment of inertia. So what was I? Inertia. What kind of inertia? What, what kind of moment of inertia? Area. area moment of inertia. Area moment of inertia deals with the cross section. Polar moment of inertia deals with both area moments of inertia, X and Y, because you have a different area moment of inertia for each axis. So what polar is doing is taking into consideration this three-dimensional feature of a long round shaft. Okay, so what is it exactly? J is equal to I X plus I Y. So this is just I X or I Y, one or the other, right? Um, so you, you, if you don't know it, you calculate the area moment of inertia of both axes, X and Y, and add them together. The back of the book should have J values for shapes or J equations. And it does. Back of the book. So for a semi-circular half round, way over here, polar moment of inertia, here's the equation. Okay. Solid round is over here. That's what we have. Solid round down here. And all the way over to J. And it's doing it at the center of gravity at the neutral axis, which is where we want it. What's the equation? Pi D, pi D to the fourth over 32. So this is very shape dependent. So J for a circle is pi D to the fourth over 32. J of our circle by what's our D value? 1.25 to the fourth, 32. What's our J value? Screw it up. Try that again. What did you get, Samuel? Anyone else get that? Thank you. 0.2397. And what are the units? Inches to the fourth, those good old inertia units. Love it. So we're not doing bedding stress. We're doing torsion. So now we have all the pieces. Let's put it in the equation. Torque. going to be important to put the units in so you make sure these cross out we should end up with psi or potentially ksi but we're going to want to stress right c values 0.625 inches and then the j value tc over j 0.2397 That unit is inches to the fourth. So we have a unit problem, right? Everyone see our unit problem? Yeah. 
Pounds is good, but we need pounds per square inch. We have inch and feet above, inches to the fourth below. So we need to get rid of the feet. Yeah, so there's 12 inches whoops, per foot. And that's the way you write your conversion because then the feet disappear. We have feet squared above, feet to the fourth below, and then pounds above. That gives us PSI. What do we get? It's our number. How much? One one eight nine. One one eight nine. Oh six. PSI. Anyone else get that? Oh, did you multiply thirty eight by twelve? Yeah. Nine hundred. Uh -oh. I did not have the Wait, no. Wait, 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 wait. Uh oh. This one is. Five, one, six, five. By 12. Oh, I did that. I got 99. And then I, and then I just redid it, but multiplied 30 by 12 to make it turn the foot. Oh. Eight, 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 four. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. We're not trying to get. We're not trying to get. I'm over. 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 You don't get that number? Okay, I multiply it all to the top. Yep. Okay, let's do that together. I divide it by the thing. So I got the first thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So above, I get 225. Anybody else get that for the upper portion? It gives me 285. Wow, do I have dyslexia or something? 38? Yes, I got it. Times 0. 0.625 times 12. I get 285. Is that what you got? Yes. Okay. And then you divide that by 0. 0.2397. Oh, because I still get 118. I get 8890. One, that's what I get. One, one, eight, eight, nine. And if I was to round, it would be nine. Yeah. Got no rounding. I got this. Perfect. Okay, now I get this. Oh, uh, engineering firm is coming together on agreement here. And what do we make of that? Copper? What does copper think of 1100? About 1,200 PSI. Yeah, no problem. No problem. All right, so then the next thing with torsion is... Well, how much did it twist? That's our old deflection, right? Like, okay, we put these two twisting effects on this shaft. The shaft is able to resist it. We'll say this shaft is 30 inches long. How much did it twist? What's the deflection? Because that's very important that we keep things within limits of deflection. And of course, there's a good equation for that. It's called angle of twist, how much angle there is. So that's like, okay, here's a baseline horizontal and it's gonna end up up here somewhere, right? It's gonna twist. So what we calculate is how much angle of twist there is in the shaft. And then you could actually, you know, you could do length of arc and figure out deflection if you needed that value. Most of the time we just need to know, all right, from the center line, how much did it twist? What was the angle of twist? Angle of twist is, 
theta, theta, angle of twist, torsion, which we just calculated, length over G, I don't think that's the base. Oh yeah, it is, JG. So to get angle of twist, you've got to calculate torsion first. We've got to have that number, right? We got to know the length. I just gave you 30 inches. We got to know J. We just calculated J. And then we got to know G. Modulus of rigidity. Wow, that's cool. Because now we already had a modulus of elasticity. That's how elastic it is. So how rigid it is, like just think of the opposite of elasticity would be how rigid it is or how stiff it is, how much it resists, right? So if you have plastic shaft, the modulus of rigidity is very low. It doesn't resist twist very much. If you have a steel or copper shaft, it's gonna have a higher modulus of rigidity. It is a material property, so that means we should be able to look it up. PSI or KSI? KSI. Yeah. So G for copper. Six thousand KSI. What's G again? Modulus of elasticity. No rigidity. Rigidity. Oh. E is modulus of elasticity. So that gives us all the pieces for angle of twist. Right, I got my torsion. I have my length. I got my J value. And then my modulus of, red, of uh, rigidity, I'm gonna put it in pounds because I have pounds in the equation, right? And we want those pounds to go away. So that would be what? Another three zeros, six million. Correct? Oh, my ass. Do you think this would be a small number or a large number? Angle of twist. Should be small. Yeah. We weren't anywhere near the yield, right? Of the material. How, how much is our angle of twist? Yeah, I'm gonna actually write four eight. And let's look at the units. What happens to the pounds? They go away. What happens to this inch and that inch? Yeah. We're left with one inch down here, right? But then what about these two? So we're gonna have inches squared down below. Yeah. That's gonna flip all the way up because this is really down below too. What is, what's our unit? Angle of twist. Degrees. Well, we would hope, but we don't have degrees in the equation. So what happens to all these units? They cancel. They're all flipping gone. Everything cancels. So the equation is going to boil down to a unitless number, and any unitless angle is, anyone know? Radians. Yeah, exactly. Radians. 
Well, that's difficult because if you give radians to a mechanic out on the shop floor or a fabricator, they're going to be like, you need to go back to school because we don't measure angles and radians. How do we get to degrees? Yeah, what is that conversion factor? It's like 180. That's an area of a circle. Um, 180 over pi. I remember it in 2 pi, 360. 360. That's how I remember it. A full circle is 2 pi, right? A half circle is pi. So however you want to remember it, uh, I do a full circle, but a half circle would be 180 degrees per pi radians. That's the conversion. Well, it wouldn't matter. No, no, it wouldn't matter as long as you keep it correct. The two would... Yeah, I know people that know it like one degree is this many radians. I'm like, oh man, some decimal, you know, like, oh gosh, couldn't do it. Yeah. So I would multiply this to pi and then 180 would be divided by that. Yeah. So we have radians over one, okay. right? So I would use this conversion, 180 degrees so over pi radians, and then the radians drop and I'm left with degrees. Okay. So it's this number times 180 divided by pi if you're using that conversion. So what's that number? Yeah, 1.42. One point four two degrees. Yeah. So then if we had something like mounted to that shaft, right, in that section, it's gonna twist this one point in the length of the shaft, it's gonna twist this one point four two degrees. So it can, it can be a lot. Like if you whatever you had mounted was like you know, out here a ways, and you move 1.42, that it can be a, a distance, you know, it's not, that's not something we can't think about. We're going to end up with things crashing into other things when we load shafts. It's good. All right, you got a couple of them to work on. Let's see what they are here. And I have, I have an exam schedule for Thursday. Do you all see that? It's exciting. But... What? Yeah. Huh? Everything but this week. <laughs> no torsion on it. So. What's the best way to prepare for this? Go back through the chapter summaries of the chapters we've done. Yeah, so just go back through... From, I think we started chapter nine, stress and strains, right? So at the end of the chapter nine um, in the book is the chapter summary. So we started with what is stress? It's P over A. What is shear stress? Again, P over A. We pretty much have never left that equation. This is P over A, a lot of different ways. Is it open notes? Open book, open notes, open brain, open brain. Yeah. Open internet. Open not not open neighbor, not open internet, not open artificial intelligence. We want to use our real intelligence. Whew. Crazy. How many problems? How many problems? I'm not telling you. We only have an hour. Two. Two hours. We have one hour. Two problems. Two problems. Then you get fifty percent. I did some really crazy stuff already, so I'm not doing anything else really. Crazy. So I know. Okay, but well, how many questions? It's only an hour. How many could there be? Four. I'm asking two or three. I think I credited it. Like... Because statics, we had like eight. Yeah. We had two is. hours. It's like I don't know how many, but this is more complicated. Well, no way. No, you're right. That's crazy. Yeah, that's too little too. Oh. <laughs> so there's uh what chapter nine, chapter ten, chapter eleven. That's what we're gonna focus on. Not chapter twelve. Nine, ten, and eleven. 
So if it gave you one problem from each chapter, that would be three problems. I could probably even get away with somewhere. two questions from each chapter if they were on the simpler side. Or I could get away with like four questions on each chapter if I was doing some kind of like take this part off and take it home and turn it in. Blah, 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 blah. Who knows? Could be anything. 9, 10, and 11. Chapters, 9, 10, and 11. Yes, right. I would definitely go back over it because it's been a while since we did chapter nine, but nine was like foundational. Um, honestly, 10 is all about materials. So I'm probably not going to ask you like, you know, what are the pros and cons of concrete? Because you can just look in your book, right? And look up the pros and cons of concrete. So 10, 10's got factor of safety in it. It's going to be nine and 11, I'm telling you. Nine and 11, chapter nine and 11. <laughs> oh yeah, let's roll. I built a crap stain. At least one person can't have All right, good. Any questions? No. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, no. Exam is <laughs> exam is definitely <laughs> exam is optional. Going to college is optional. You know, being a good human, I guess, is optional based on based on the news. Yeah. <laughs> the only 